Alrighty then. Uh, this is going to be a somewhat long video, possibly divided up into multiple sections. Haven't really decided. Uh, it's um, what it is is way back when Radio Shack went out of business. They I bought one of these antenna rotators that they sold. They're not the best ones. They're kind of cheap and crappy. But I don't remember what I paid for it, but it wasn't very much. And I'd like to finally put it up. I've had it sitting around for probably three or four years now. Maybe two or three, I'm not sure. Um, and of course my house is older and uh, it doesn't seem to have the same design as most newer houses. Um, so I kind of have to custom build antenna mounts. Um, most anything I find is just doesn't work. At least uh, not without heavy modification. So I won't go into details on this antenna rotor. There's tons of videos on YouTube about them. It's nothing special. But I'm going to go quickly over the plans. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. Uh, so the way this is going to work this is looking down on the mount this section is going to go against the wall of my house <clears throat> this is the part that's going to stick out past the uh, eave my eave is approximately 19 and a half inches <clears throat> from here to probably around here and then that gives me about a half an inch or so past it uh, this is going to be the base and this is going to be a couple of feet below the eave um, it's going to sit level pointing straight up and then the actual eave of the house is going to help support the antenna mast uh, this way I only need two legs. I'm going to be building this out of basically scrap I have around the house which consists of a lot of uh, bed frame which I think is an inch and a half and I pretty much designed this to be built entirely out of bed frame so this piece is just a section of right angle bed frame the end pieces that are going to go against the house are right angle and the same as this and so we're going to weld this piece up to and each of these sections are going to be about six inches long and then we're going to weld this to the middle and then we're going to weld to the middle of this one and then of course we're going to have holes drilled to mount into the side of my house either into wood or brick or concrete or whatever the cinder block is made out of um, because this 19 and a half measurements this measurement from here to here is an oddball measurement which is 28.3776 inches and um, basically I'm just going to measure out 28 inches and then I'm going to use a pair of dial calipers to get the last little bit. Um, I printed out one to ones of this so pretty much I'm going to cut this out and lay it on top of the bed frame, the right angle, trace out the line and then just cut it to match this. 
Um, I have one for left and one for right. And I'm not going to show every single step of this. Uh, I'm going to assume that uh, you've seen people cut metal, um, so I won't. I probably won't do that. I'm just going to show the finished pieces before they get welded, and I, I may record some of the welding. Uh, some pe people like to watch that. And you get to see me do really bad welding. Um, then I'll just show various steps along the way as I get it done. Um, it may take me a couple of days, may take me a couple of weekends. Uh, you guys will, will see it uh, probably in one or two videos at the most. So um, I think that's it. The next step is I'm going to go find the pieces, measure them out, and cut them. So. Alright, so I've started cutting out a couple pieces of uh, angle iron and basically what I've done is I have measured out 28 inches, made a line, then measured out 0.3776 using the style cal caliper and then scratched a line and then using a right angle scratched it out got the location of where the corner was and then it's a 45 degree angle so I've marked a 45 degree angle uh, the only real issue with this is that <laughs> I'm going to have a heck of a time cutting that out and getting it straight. Um, my uh, metal cutting saw doesn't uh, cut the straightest lines no, no matter how hard I try. I'm not sure what the deal is. Um, it takes me a little bit to get it exactly perfect. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'm going to do this with a handheld cutter or exactly how I'm going to do it. So, alrighty, uh, <clears throat> still the same day. I've uh, got my two main pieces of steel cut, and then I've got the center piece. It's all cut and basically prepped for welding. The end pieces are cut and prepped for welding. I need to drill some holes for lag bolts to go on the wa uh, wall. I'm going to do that here in just a little bit. Clean. This is where the uh, steel tube is going to mount like this then the main tube is going to come in here there's actually a notch to keep it from turning um, and I've cleaned it up in preparation because I'm just going to weld it in place so I'm going to go drill those holes and uh, we'll be back okay so uh, holes for the for lag bolts have been drilled and I'm calling it quits for the day. Generally, uh, it's, I've actually been pretty busy today, and I found that it, as the day goes on, uh, if I'm working a project, uh, it's best to quit before I get really tired or anything. And is my give a damn and my. Uh, attention to detail tends to suffer after that. So we're gonna call it quits until tomorrow and uh, 
and we're gonna weld, I'm gonna weld all this together. Okay, I uh, hopefully you can see all this. I'm getting ready to weld this on here. I'm just going, I had it all laid out. Um, check that this is level as much as I can. And I'm going to tack weld this on here. And then I'm going to do the other one so that I can make sure that when these when I put the centerpiece in and get that all set up that they're actually going to be flat against the wall. This thing has a lot of weird angles and um, so getting it right is, is going to kind of be difficult. Uh, this is my ARC 200S welder that I got off of Amazon. It's an inverter welder. Um, I've only used it a couple times. I haven't done a video about it. Uh, it's uh, supposedly a 200 amp arc welder. Yeah. Um, I've got it currently set up at 90 amps with some 6013 rod. And we'll see how that works. <sighs> so. See how well that held. I think that's good enough. Alright, I'm going to do the other one. And this is the other side.
think I'll bump up the uh, current a little bit. Alright, so... So the next thing is I'm going to have to rig these up so that I can uh, weld the two pieces together.
That is probably some of the ugliest welding I think I've ever done. <clears throat> well, before anyone goes shooting their mouth off about how bad of a welder I am, I'll just let you know that I am a bad welder. This is only about the third or fourth time I've ever used an arc welder. Get over it. I'm gonna have to reposition this since I think this is a this thing doesn't like to weld vertically.
Okay, well, I'm pretty much done with the welding. This cross beam, I didn't put this on the original drawing because uh, I, I was going to put it on anyways and it's not something that has to be accurately measured. Uh, not showing you any of the welds. If you can see some in uh, this video, um, I'm sorry. Um, hide them from children and women with delicate sensibilities. Uh, this is probably some of the worst welding I've ever done. I have a, a MIG welder and uh, or small or whatever it is and uh, I can do a whole lot better. I'm just trying to practice with uh, this arc welder and I'm still trying to get the hang of it. If uh, this was a something I was someone was paying for, I would have had to start over, um, but it will work for my purposes, so that's good enough for me. Uh, the next video, it will be a while, I've got to get help to put this thing up, and so, anyways, that's it for now. It's upside down. Grinder and paint makes us the welder we ain't. Although in this case, I just painted it. I didn't weld. I didn't grind it.